Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the UGC Net Home Science previous year questions, March 2023. We'll start with Human Development Unit. The total number of questions asked was 16. And the first question is, surplus energy theory was proposed by, the given options are, A, Lazarus, 1883, Patrick, 1916, B, Schiller, 1873, Spencer, 1875, C. Mitchell and Manson, 1948, and D. G. Stanley Hall, 1906. So first, let, let us understand what is surplus energy. Actually, surplus energy is referred to the pent-up energy, which is released through physical activities, like when we climb, run, or jump. And the surplus energy theory states that play is very important for child's development, which help in developing the imaginary, creative, physical, cognitive, and social strength of the child, which was given by Schiller 1873 and Spencer 1875. The remaining three options, which is Lazarus 1883, Patrick 1916, Michelle and Manson 1948, and G. Stanley 1906 are not relevant to our subject, so we will not get into it. So in this question, they were asking you about the surplus energy theory and who proposed it. So the correct answer will be option number B, which is Schiller 1873, Spencer 1875. Question number two, which is disorders that often involve, that is commonly referred to as stirring, stuttering, also known as the given options are option A, language disorders, option B, learning disorders, option C, fluency disorders, option D, articulation disorders. So let's understand all the disorders given in the options. First one is language disorder. It is an inability which involves difficulty in understanding, using, or writing the language. It has three types. The first one is phonological. Phonological is a conditioner, condition in which child may say boo for book or pee for pig. Then we have apraxia which is a condition in which they can feel challenging to express their emotions. Like they cannot put word on what they are feeling. So maybe they can say, if they want to say kitchen, they may say chicken. And the third one is aphasia, which is a condition when they express themselves using two words. Like if they want to say, I will walk the dog, and they'll say walk dog just uh, defining this whole sentence in two words. The option B was learning disorder, which is a neurological condition and affects the academic skills like reading, writing, or arithmetics. It has three types. The first one is dyslexia, which is a difficulty in reading. Like a person cannot read the word if it is mentioned now, now as in N-O-W, they may read as one, one as in W-O-N-1. Then the second type is dyscaphia, which is a difficulty in similar looking words. Like children cannot define the similar looking words, which can be as they can read a small b and a small d. They cannot differentiate between a small b and small d. Then the third one is dyscalculia, which is a difficulty in understanding maths. They cannot differentiate between numbers like 8 and 9 will look similar to them. They cannot differentiate between 2 and 3. So that is dyscalculia. The option C was fluency disorder, which affects the flow or rhythm of the speech. They may repeat words or have prolonged pauses. And it has three different types. The first one is shuttering or stammering, which is a condition when they have difficulty in speaking and may repeat the words. Like if they want to say 
happy, they'll stop in her. Her. They cannot complete like happy. They'll be stopping at her. Her. Then there is cluttering. Cluttering is an ex excessive use of interjections. Like they'll use so many hmm, huh, while speaking. Then the third one is psychogenic shuttering. Uh, it is a condition when the person cannot speak in public places. They will be comfortable in speaking between two or three people. But if you will ask, ask them to speak in front of 15 people, they will not be uh, able to speak it. It is also a form of stage fear as we commonly use it. Then the last option was articulation disorder, which is a difficulty with precise pronunciation of speech sound and may have unclear speech or difficulty in uh, which may create difficulty to understand. It has three different types. The first one is substitution where substitution is a condition where they will write my favorite candy is lollipop and may read as my funny candy is lollipop. Then the second type is omission which is the condition in which they will leave out the speech sound such as like kids use it for spoon they'll say spoon uh, the cute things they use uh, but that is actually a disorder then we have epenthesia which is a condition when child adds some word when in in the earlier stages when child is learning to speak in that case they can add certain words like if they want to say blue they'll say blue. They cannot pronounce it correctly. Coming back to our question where it was asking about the disorder as associated with shuttering. So after seeing the explanation, we can say the correct answer is fluency disorder, which is option number C. Question number three is direct, active and physical aggression is and the given options are A, performing a practical joke. Then we have B, insulting uh, the victim. C is refusing to speak. And D is punching the victim. Let's see the different types of aggression first. The first one is verbal versus physical, which in which verbal aggression can be name calling or taunting or accusing someone, whereas physical aggression can be assaulting, hitting, biting or kicking someone. Then we have instrumental versus hostile in which instrumental aggression is goal directed such as robbing a bank just like a series we all have watched Money Heist. They have proper goal uh, for their aggression. Then we have hostile aggression in which an individual will have a fight with random people. Like uh, picking up a fight in cafe, you don't know what is the reason behind aggression and they'll pick up the fight with random people. Then the third one is direct versus indirect in which direct aggression is when the reason is defined. Mm, for example, maybe you have broken someone's very valuable belonging and now they are not talking to you. So you know why they are not talking to you. And indirect aggression involves third party. Like people uh, are ganging up against someone and spreading rumors about them. So the victim don't know what is the reason behind all such rumors and everything. And they they have no clue why this all the mishappening is happening with them. Then we have reactive versus proactive. Where reactive aggression is when someone has abused you and you have directly punched him on the face. Like you have given your re reaction at that moment of the time. Then we have proactive aggression where a child is approaching a, another child who is sitting with his toy and he'll steal that toy. He'll take the toy and he'll go away. That is a proactive uh, aggression like he didn't like it. He was jealous and he took away the toy from him. After seeing the different type of aggression uh, and coming back to options mentioned uh, in the question, performing a practical joke is in social or psychological aggression, like pranking against someone, sticking something, uh, written something in the paper and sticking it in the back of them. That can be a form of practical joke. 
Then we have insulting the victim, which is verbal or psychological aggression, like ganging up against someone and then abusing them or spreading bad things about them. The third option was refusing to speak, which is a passive and aggressive behavior. Like uh, someone is not talking to it. They will directly say that, don't talk to me, talk to my hand, that kind of aggression. And then the last one was punching the victim, which is directly associated with the physical aggression. So coming back to our question where it was asking you direct, active and physical aggression is. So after seeing the explanation, we can say that option number D, punching the victim is the correct answer. Question number four, which of the following sub stages is spread between the expanding and contracting stage of life cycle? The given options are A, college stage, B, period of vocational adjustment of children, C, period of financial recovery, D, retirement. But first, let's understand family life cycle, which is divided into seven different stages. And the stage one is establishing a family. It is when a couple, young couple get married and then, then started their family planning. And then we have stage two, which is enlarging a family. When the young couple have started their family planning and they may have one or two kids. Then we have stage three, which is developing a family which is referring to uh, those little kids are a bit grown up and now they are going to elementary school or one of them is in high school. Then we have a stage four, which is encouraging independence. When those kids are in, in the phase of adolescence and they are developing their own likes and dislikes, their interest and increasing their social circle. Then we have a stage fifth, which is launching children in which the young ones have chosen their path for their career, like what they want to become, uh, maybe engineer or a doctor. Then we have a stage six, which is post-launching children. Uh, in this stage, children have left the home to achieve their vocational goals. Then we have last stage, which is retirement, when couples are left alone in the home, just like the stage one, but they have much bigger responsibilities now and children are living their life, achieving their goals. This is also called empty nest. So coming back to our question, in which they were asking you, the sub stages spread between expanding and contracting stage. So after understanding the explanation, we can see the option number B, which is period of vocational adjustment of children is the correct answer. Thank you for watching the video. Do subscribe to our channel. Thank you.